Why, hello there. Um, today we're going to be talking about some attributes of quadratic functions, okay, and um, which are the vertexes and axis of symmetries, um, x and y intercepts, whether your vertex is a maximum or minimum point, and then the range okay, of this function. And then we're going to be sketching it. So these are, um, well, they're the things that make up our parabola and the things that make all of your parabola unique. So let's jump in and get started right here. Finding the vertex. Okay, so we find the vertex always by doing this formula. Okay, the x value of your vertex is negative b divided by 2a. Okay, where a is in front of x squared and b is in front of x and c is that number there. So to find the x part, we do the negative of 4 divided by 2 times 1. Okay, which is negative 4 over 2 which is negative two. Okay, so this one has an x-intercept, or rather an x-coordinate for the vertex of negative two. <clears throat> now to figure out what the y-coordinate is, we have to plug negative two in to your x values. So that over here, I know this isn't very organized, but we'll, we'll figure it out. It's negative two squared plus four times negative two minus five, is four minus eight minus five, which is negative four minus five, negative nine. Okay, so this has a vertex at the point negative two, negative nine. Okay, so let's plot that on here, negative two, negative nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine down. So there's the vertex, negative two, negative nine. Now, the axis of symmetry is a unique little line, um, imaginary line. It's the line that goes vertically through your vertex that splits your parabola um, right down the middle. So it's, uh, like I said, it's the line that makes it symmetrical. Okay, so because this is a vertical line, it has an x equals equation. And because it goes through the x vertex, it has the x coordinate as its equation. So this is the line x equals negative 2 which is the axis of symmetry, the line through the vertex. Okay, the y-intercept is one of my favorites because the y-intercept, you plug in zero for all of x. So zero squared plus four times zero minus five means all this other stuff cancels out and the y-intercept is at zero, negative five. Negative one, two, three, four, five. We'll put that right here. Okay, your x-intercepts, the next attribute. To find the x-intercepts, we have to factor or otherwise solve this quadratic. Okay, so if I had x squared plus 4x minus 5, um, this factors to x plus 5 and x minus 1. Okay, numbers that multiply to give you negative 5 and add to give this one. So this means I have an x-intercept at negative 5 and positive 1. And because these are points, I'm going to write them as points. So negative 5, comma, 0, and positive 1, comma, 0. Sorry, this should be a positive 1, shouldn't it? And we can put those on here. Here's positive 1, and then 3, 4, 5. Okay, those points are both three units away from your axis of symmetry, so that's good there. All right, now, speaking of your vertex, um, is this vertex a maximum or a minimum point? Okay, so to do that, we look at the positivity. We notice that there's a positive x squared, okay, which means this parabola opens up. So if the parabola opens up, then this is going to be a minimum value. Okay, positive parabolas open up. Okay, like this. So the bottom vertex point is the lowest point on that graph. So the range is going to be from that negative 9, right? The y value is the lowest point. The y values, ranges are y values, and that's going to continue on to infinity. Okay, so the minimum, because it's a minimum, the y value goes on the left side of your interval notation, and then infinity goes on the right. So then the last thing there is to do is to sketch this as good as you can going through these couple of points. So it's got to come through your intercept, okay, come down to your vertex and be curved at the bottom. Okay, it's not a V, it's a curve down there. And then come up through your other one. 
Okay, this is the hardest part, drawing it so it makes it nice and clean, especially when you're doing it on a computer. Okay, so those are the attributes of quadratic functions. So let's deal another one. Um, this one down here, negative x squared plus 2x plus 15. Okay, so once again, find the vertex. We always do x equals negative b divided by 2a. So the negative of positive 2, right? So a value is negative 1, b is positive 2, and c is 15. So the negative of 2 times divided by 2 times negative 1. Okay, the negative here is your a, which means we have a, oops, we have a positive 1, right? Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is positive 1 as the vertex, the x-coordinate of your vertex. So then to find the y-coordinate, we plug it back in. So the negative of 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 15. Okay, negative 1 plus 2 plus 15 is 16. So this has a vertex at 1 comma 16. Ooh, that's right here. And then we'll put 16 way up here. Just so I don't have to count it all out. There's your vertex at the point 1 comma 16. Hey, the axis of symmetry is the line that runs through your vertex. So x equals 1 is the equation of your axis of symmetry. Okay, you don't have to do anything else except for know that it goes through the x-coordinate okay, of your vertex. So this is x equals 1 is the axis of symmetry. Okay, the y-intercept. Plug in 0 for x. So it's negative of 0 squared plus 2 times 0 plus 15 is going to be just 15. So y-intercept of 0, 15. Okay, so plug in 0 for x. So 15 is 1 below 16. Let's put it right there. Okay, x-intercepts. All right, so this is the part where we have to solve this equation for x. So negative x squared plus 2x plus 15. Okay, so I'm going to factor a negative out, right? We want to know when this equals zero. So divide everything by negative one. Let's do that. That gets, make, makes our x squared positive, right? So that means it changes the signs of everything else. So it's a minus 2x and a minus 15 equals zero. Okay, so this one factors to x minus 5 and x plus 3. Those are the numbers that multiply to give you negative 15, and add, right, when you distribute all this, add to give you negative 2. So that means that x equals positive 5 or x equals negative 3. So these are your two intercepts at negative 3, 0, and at 5, 0. So 1, 2, 3 is an intercept, and 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, notice they're both four units away from your axis of symmetry, which is exactly what we would expect. Okay, is this vertex a maximum point or a minimum point? So because it is a negative quadratic, right, it has a negative x squared, this is going to be a maximum value. This is going to be the highest point of your graph. Okay, and as such, the range is going to be from negative infinity to that y value 16 that we find from your vertex. Okay, so the y value of your vertex is always the y value that's included in your range. Okay, in this case, because it's a maximum point, it's from negative infinity to 16, because 16 is the biggest, and the biggest things go on the right. Okay, so now that we've got all those attributes, our next step is to draw the nicest looking parabola that we possibly can. Okay, curvy at the top and goes through all these points. And if you're doing this on a computer and you're using a mouse, uh, just do your best. Okay, if you have a nice piece of grid paper, then that should look fantastic. Okay, and so these are the attributes of your parabola. The vertex, the axis of symmetry, your x and y intercepts, whether that vertex is a maximum or a minimum point, and then the range based upon that maximum.